that's the thing from the coach to Eisman. They're like, we're not a championship team. Yeah. We're getting better. We're getting better. We're close to the playoffs. And you mentioned, look what Detroit Lions did to the NFL this year, how they really, you know, that kind of city. And so to get the Flyers and to get the Red Wings in Boston, those fan bases are just different. They just are. They're a little more intense, and there's a lot more of them. And that's good for ratings, and it's good for arena. Um, it's good for the, the surrounding area. So, yeah, so these are these are teams that have been playing for over 100 years, like the Red Wings, that grandfathers, great-grandfathers. There's that generational – bond that yeah. only a team around that long can have yeah well i got to i got to be in joe lewis arena as a member of the colorado avalanche and and that was very cool growing up watching um watching that rivalry and 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 then getting to partake in it in in my um you know call it a not even a cup of coffee we'll call it an espresso <laughs> shot of a career um, Love espresso Everybody who's watching us on YouTube right now, I mean, excuse me, on Twitter right now, our YouTube stream is back up and running. So come back over to cool. our, our YouTube because I do want to take a lot of questions in the chat today. One of our, our, our listeners, Butchie, Neil Foddy, who is, is always, you know, coming at us with questions. Um, he proposed this question uh, into the Twitter chat, actually. And he said, if John Butchagross, uh, to you, so if Butchie could coach one team in the NHL right now, what team would you want to coach and why? No, oh, that's fun. Yeah, that's a fun question. Well, I think for me, it would be Edmonton just because I want to witness Connor McDavid's maniacal thirst to win a Stanley Cup. You know, it's um, he hasn't done a lot in his career team wise. He's certainly done amazing amounts of things individually. But whether it's a gold medal or whether it's a Stanley Cup or whether it's even reaching the finals, he hasn't done it. And so he's getting up there. He's, you know, he's still a young man, what, 27 years old. Um, but, you know, he sees 30 coming in a couple of years. This would be the best hockey he's ever played. He's kind of on that arc. He might be the peak, might be a couple more years. But then, it, you know, it, people do slow down a little bit. So, yeah, so just to be front row seat and that, boy, they're going. They got 40 wins now. This is the best they've been since 86. Uh, when they won the cup. Um, so it's, uh, it's, or they lost the cup that year, right? In 86. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, it, to see him because he's the most amazing thing in hockey right now. He just is. I mean, McKinnon's close and McKinnon's got a nice scoring lead right now. It's going to be close. And he's, you know, he wants that badly. Uh, it's hard to win Art Rosses in this era with McDavid. So you got to get it when you can, just like trying to play golf in Tiger's era and trying to win an MVP in Gretzky's era or a scoring title. It's just, God, why did this guy have to be born when I was born, you know? And uh, other other people will have not a good career as me, but they'll have an MVP and two scoring titles. I got neither, but I'm a better player, right? Um, so, yeah. So I think it would be McDavid. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting. I don't know if you saw uh, Zadorov's quote or let's call it comments I don't know. Sometime in the last 36 hours, he was asked this question about who's the hardest player and the best player in the world, the best player in the league. Um, and he said, I would build my team around Nathan McKinnon. He's the best player in the league. He's the hardest player to play against. He's already won a cup and he's got the drive. And I'm sitting there thinking Vancouver, Edmonton, like he played in Calgary. There's that hatred with Edmonton. But I, I did think it was interesting where, where Zadorov said, you know, I, I would think that would slam dunk be Connor McDavid. And then after Connor McDavid, you kind of have a list of a few other players, McKinnon, McCarr, Kucherov, that you're like, okay, that's that next cr crop of superstar. But Zadorov went right to Nathan McKinnon. So um, we'll, we'll, he, we'll talk about He likes to stir it up. He likes to stir yeah. it up. Remember his, his comments about McKinnon's diet when he went out the door a couple of years ago and that stirred up McKinnon. So he may be trying to get back on Nate's side. Maybe he's trying to soften Nate in case they see him in the postseason. Yeah. Uh, or just stir it up with because we could have because you know we could have an early Edmonton Vancouver series too. So yeah, that's good. He does a good job of actually stirring things up. So Dorav, I'll give him that. We need more of that. It's nice to see guys not afraid to say things that they know yeah. could end up being bulletin board material or you know make its way through different dress rooms. I think that's great. I think it just creates animosity amongst the players and and you know, look, I like that. I think that's great. It's great for the sport. It's great for media. You know, it, it brings a bubble when you're sitting at the desk at ESPN doing either a studio hit or an open right. or a first period. It gives you something to really elevate and talk yeah, about. It, yeah. It gives you a conduit to a conversation. Right. Yeah. 
And, and so it's not just, let's just make up this conversation, which is fine. You can do that. But when you have a conduit through a quote from a guy, that makes it legitimized yeah. a little bit, makes it more fun. It adds a layer of personality for him. So yeah, I agree. That, that stuff is always good. Yeah. Well, you know, we're talking a little bit of playoff hockey and who we'd want and, 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 you know, what player can, can drive you through, you know, one of the things I wanted to get into with you today, Butchie, because you're one of these, these guys that I don't know if you have a crystal ball or what the deal is, but you're always willing to go out on a limb and, and have an opinion. Okay. It's one thing that you actually kind of taught me early on in my broadcasting career. When we started working together, you're like, look, you can be wrong, but have an opinion, right? Don't mm -hmm. stay in the middle. I remember you telling me that seven or eight years ago now. Um, and, and I took that to heart. I, I did. And, and I'm not afraid to be wrong and I, I'm not afraid to have an opinion. And, and, you know, I, I, where I wanted to kind of go to, with you on this is looking at the playoff race right now and, and the bubble teams and who's coming, who's fallen, where teams are going, especially in the East, because it, it's gotten interesting as of late, as we put up the Eastern Conference standings for everybody to take a look at. And, you know, right now the Flyers are, are still in third in the Metro. Um, they've been in that spot all year. You've got Tampa Bay, who's been a little bit hit or miss as of late. Um, you know, Coop called them out a couple of weeks ago and said that was an embarrassing effort against Calgary. They come out, they stump the Flyers, Torts gets tossed. We'll talk about him later. And then you've got the Islanders who are going one way and the Red Wings, who we just talked about, going the other. I want to ask you this, Butchie, when, when the season ends, okay, who are going to occupy, let's call it, the third spot in the Metro and those two wild card teams, like where, how do you see that playing out here over the next six weeks? Yeah. Well, the Metro, obviously the Rangers will be in first and the hurricanes will be in second. The third place team is either going to be the flyers or the Islanders. You know, that's the, the hurricanes. know their first round opponent will be Philly or New York. Islanders have two games in hand right now. Now they are four points back. They had to win both of those and they only have 21 regulation wins this year. So you really can't bet on that. They probably have the better goaltenders. Um, the, uh, the Flyers are definitely leaking. They're, they're, they're releasing air right now. That's obvious. They put a lot into this season. They didn't do a lot at the deadline. You know, some Walker traded, and it's just – you can just sense it's just a little bit of air. They're trying to hang on. There's fingernails on the cliff of the Roadrunner cartoon, right? And can <laughs> they make it? They got 16 games left. So that's not a lot. So, you know, they barely beat the Sharks the other night. Again, they're hanging on against the Shark team, which is an American League team practically now. Um, so I don't know. The, and then the Isles definitely have some momentum. You know, they both, you know, they, they, they're they two very similar teams. Their goals for, goals against are almost identical. Um, obviously, the, the Islanders have a little bit better goaltending. They're both minus goal differentials. You know, the Flyers are minus one. We talk about those teams on the bubble, right? The average teams on the bubble who don't have elite players. You know, they have cl maybe close to elite or kind of elite or really, 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 really good like Barzell, you know. Yeah. Um, but, if, if, but if you look at them roster for roster, you'd probably favor the Islanders a little bit for these last 16 games. Um, but again, we'll see what happens. They lose both of these makeup games. Then they're down four points with, you know, 16 to go. That's that's tough traction. So yeah. I, I would stay with the eight that are there for now. Um, and. And, but I, I do think the Islanders are going to somehow squeak in. I think they have enough, a little bit of push that the Wings and Flyers don't seem to have. Now, again, you can regroup quickly in this league. Oh, look what the, the Predators did. And that's what I was saying about a month ago. Whatever team gets that eight, nine game winning streak, like I thought it could be the Devils. Thought it might be, you know, maybe the Penguins will win eight in a row. Um, and, that, that, and that's what the Predators did. Now they're in, right? So that one of these teams, if the schedule shakes up a certain way, Maybe they'll win seven in a row, yeah. and um, and then boom, they're there, right? And and it, because they're the, the, because the teams are so much the same, it's hard to pick. And I don't know why. I don't know how anyone can go on Betway and pick these games you know, down the stretch because yeah. everybody's so alike, right? It's... Now, 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 if if you see a moment for an over under in a situation where a roster is really depleted and it's their fifth game in seven days, that's how you do your homework, I think, down the stretch to make yourself a little, some, some shillings that way. But yeah, trying to figure out, will it be the Flyers or Islanders is really difficult. But, so the Flyers who, who have had a very tough schedule as of late and finished with a tough schedule. But I, I do want to point this out to you. And this is from a couple of shows ago. The Islanders next eight games after the end, they've got, I think, one more game on the road trip. And then they play New York, 
Carolina, Detroit, Winnipeg, Jersey, Florida, Tampa, Philly. So there's an op- opportunity against Philly. Um, there's opportunities against the Metro. Winnipeg's tough. We know the wagon Florida is like it's a it's a hard it's a hard couple of weeks really for both of those teams and and um, I I would tend to agree like I think the Islanders are going to get in. Patrick Waugh has sort of changed the way that they defend. Um, they, they're spending way less time in their own zone. They're killing plays a lot quicker. I totally agree with what you said about Matt Barzell, and I'm glad you said it. He's a really, really, really good player. But he's not an elite player in the NHL, right? He's just not. He's yeah, an all star. Just, a, but he, just he's doesn't, not score doesn't, no. doesn't score and, enough. No, and it's the yeah. same thing in Philly. Philly doesn't have an, an elite level player uh, on yeah. their roster. Um, right. They've got Travis Konechny, who's who's a who's a really good really player, good. right? Right. They've got yep. other guys who are really good players, but they do not have an elite player. And when you play teams like San Jose, or, okay, like or Anaheim, when you don't have an elite player that can be sleepy That's for fifty-five minutes and score two goals, you get into tight hockey games. Like there's no easy night for an Islanders team or a Flyers team. Right. And that's why you look at the Bruins. Just take David Pasternak off that team. Screwed. It's a whole different ball. Screwed. They have that one. Su- he's a superstar. Yeah. And McAvoy, and McAvoy is a star. So they yeah. got two. One on each side of the yeah. you know, after, after that, though, they're the Flyers. They're the Islanders. I know. You know what I mean? And I, so I, that's, I, what, that, that, that's why when you make your picks or your predictions, who has the most elite people? Again, you know, the Avalanche have – Hall of Famers, Rantanen, McKinnon, McCarr. They're all going to the Hall of Fame. Three of them. Hall of Fame. Much less after that, a couple of good guys, but really those three guys. And then the Rangers, Adam Fox, elite. Yeah. Shuster- Shusterkin looks elite again. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and so now suddenly Panarin this year, elite. Mm-hmm. So there's three. So they got three yep. elite guys. Yeah. And then they got good guys around. You're like a Kreider, Zabinijad, then you have a guy, a, a good player plays great. They can be elite for a week, right? Or a totally series. agree. Yeah. Or two, a month. So, so you need guys who have a chance to be elite for a month. And it's, again, like you said, the Flyers probably don't even have that, right? Again, yeah, good no. players, Lawton, yeah. Connect. These are good guys, but could they even be elite for six weeks, right? And so that's when you look at these series, look down the stretch. Who could who could do? And again, like you said, that's the thing about the Red Wings. Like you said, the Brinkett can be elite for two months, three months. Yeah, but he's not an know? elite player. He's an elite no. scorer at times. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But um, and- it's it's really just interesting to hear your take on the word elite and how you kind of put players elite, superstar, star, very good, good. Like they're right. all important distinctions. It's how you, you build know? a team, right? Yeah. And and fans in home markets get so angry when you when you say that about their guys. When you say like, yeah, he's not a franchise cornerstone. He's not elite. You're not going to win a Stanley Cup if that's your best player. It's just not going to happen. In, in right. today's hockey where there's so many people that are superstars. One more team in the East I want to ask you about, the Buffalo yep. Sabres, okay? Wow, yeah. Johnny, Johnny's a believer in them. He thinks they're going to find their way in and push. I do not, okay? it's it, I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, the game is a little different when you're playing with house money. OK, you're you're you, you know, you're all in and and you're you're on mom and dad's credit card. You're not the one paying the bill. Right. <laughs> Do you think they have enough in them to, to find their way into this this group? Oh, man, if I they have the back. Islanders tonight. Big game against yeah. the Islanders tonight who they're chasing. Yep, they'll be three points back. Um, you know, the Islanders still have two games in hand. That's so big. Uh, even they tie those two games and boom, suddenly they're up seven points, right? With 16 to go. It's just hard. The math with the extra point, it's just so hard. It's not baseball. It's not basketball. Um, that one point just really makes it difficult that you can get and play for it at the end of regulation now, that which they'll start to do. They don't in the regular season, but they'll do that a little bit more down the stretch here. Make sure we get that tie. But no, Buffalo is, you know, they got more wins than they've lost. Um, you know, they have, they they win more than they lose on the road. Again, that team, they're better at goal prevention. They're a minus 200 team in goal prevention. Their problem this year, they're not scoring enough, right? Last year, they were a wagon of an offensive team, but obviously they, they reined it in. So you need to be able to score when you rein it in, and that's what elite players do, right? Yeah. And, um, yep. but, but once they once they get going, healthy and going, Darlene's an elite player. Tage yes. Thompson is, an, is, is kind of a borderline elite because – Borderline, last year, I agree. Right, he's close. This year we don't know because he because he was hurt too much, and then he tried to come back and a couple injuries. So we'll give him the benefit of the doubt this year. 
but you see him the way he shoots it and rips it and how you get nervous if he's on the other team when he has the puck. And that, that's usually a really good player when you get a little bit nervous. Barzell is going to do – he's going to skate around. He's going to make a pass, you know. He doesn't really – you're not worried about him shooting. Where Thompson, he could pull up to his feet and boom, just roof it from 30 feet with a wrist shot. Mm-hmm. So – and Paterka is a really good player. He's coming, you know. Yeah. So they have – and I love – I'm so happy for Byram. He's, I've had a hockey crush on him for five years. I just You love have. That for guy. years you've been tweeting been about how good him. he is. Yeah. For and years. I I talked to him in August at the, at the Las Vegas Players Tour when all the players fly to Vegas. We get to interview him, TNT and ESPN, to get all our content, our pregame content with the lights, and they go in their uniforms, and they go on the ice for us. They do a bunch of stuff, and I sat down with Byron. I'm going to try to get one of our production assistants to edit that, just to even put it on Twitter. Because I just really had a good conversation with him saying, man, I think you're really good. Yeah, I think you're really good. I was really pumping his tires, and he's just a good kid. Now he gets this chance in Buffalo just to thrive. You can see it in his body language, can't you, Colby? Like, you can just see him. Like, I feel like I'm free. Not that he wasn't free in Colorado, but there's so many good players there. Right. He's an injured there. It just, totally it's almost different. like a yeah, total new, it's a new beginning money, for him. House money, too. It's back so, to that again, house money conversation. Like, here's yep, the reality. That's a, that's, a, that's a good point. When that Buffalo mindset – I really can't make a mistake. It can't get worse. Exactly. Right? But so when it gets serious and you're two points behind, can you win that game? So right. that's, that's a, that's a great and, point. Fight. And and here's the thing, like, you know, no matter what you do, when Kale McCarr comes back from injury, like your power play time's going away. <laughs> yeah, right. and, 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 you know, unless Devon Taves and McCarr are out. So it, it's hard and, and he's going to yeah. spread his wings now. And I think we're going to get to see the, the true bone, you know, the true Byram and, you know, this is why the Philadelphia Flyers were, were targeting him when they were ta- when they were talking about moving and, and looking to trade Cutter Goche. Um, oh, wow. Byram was a huge target for them. I, I, I know this for 100% fact, okay? I'm not going to say how, but I mean, yeah. I've heard it from the horse's mouth himself, okay? Yeah. So um, they wanted this guy, but Colorado, what, you know, they weren't all that interested in a one-for-one type of swap with Byron. Really? They were not interested in a one-for-one type of swap for Byram because I think every everybody knew this guy was going to go somewhere else and he was going to be really good. And I think Colorado wants to make sure they don't look they don't look like you know, damn, we gave this guy up for not enough. So now they're hoping they bring in Middlestat. They're going to win a cup, and then nobody's going to talk about that trade. Which is, um, which is right. Yeah, you're right. That, that might be the better trade, Middlestat, if they go on to win. It's odd. I, I it helps say, right we, now. That's yeah, helped right we, now, right. Colorado. And, right, and Goche, he could help them in April. They, he could have been part of the playoffs if they because he looks but like I think a man. But you feel I know what safer, you, mean, yeah. you know. No, Jay, no, no, no. Jason anytime, Price in the chat: right. two points for regulation and OT win, one point for shootout win, zero point for losing. Get rid of the loser point. I, I think that's something they really do need to look at. Is is like you know, tearing the points on how you win the game. I, yeah. I, I got to think they're going to, they're going to continue to talk about this at the GM meetings with the PA and this and that, because well, yeah, I'm up for anything. I always say, you can always try it. doesn't work. Change it back. Not a big deal. But uh, what, if, if it means fewer teams in the playoff hunt, it'll never pass because true. that's what the, that's what the NHL wants for business. It's true. You know? and, and you I can't get blame it. them for that. No, these people play. Some of these people play these season ticket. I know there's not a lot of full season ticket plans anymore. It's more partial um, because it got too expensive. But you know, these people do lay down the tickets. You know, they want to have like you, like you say, it's kind of a mirage that maybe the Sabers are still in it. But you know, they can kind of see it. So that's going to help sell tickets. Even the Devils and Penguins. You know, I mean, the Penguins win their game in hand. Now they have as many points as Buffalo. So are they right. in it or not? Again. I know one team's going up, one team's going down, but so yeah, they're trying to. It, it's it's about selling those tickets late in the year for these. With when there's 20 games left in the season, it's like, oh man, how can we make a 25 percent of the season matter? So we need as many teams in it as possible. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I, we talked a little bit about the Flyers now, the playoff bubble and everything like that, and and you know, this is a topic. And by the way, Merles, I, I see your your question in the chat about the Frozen Four. We're gonna get to the Frozen Four a little bit later in the show, so hang in there and, and, and we'll, we'll go down that path. Matt Murley is, is asking about who we think is going to be in the frozen four, who you think actually, but <laughs> before we go there, um, I want to talk about John Tortorella a- mm-hmm. and a question was proposed to us a couple of days ago by one of our listeners about, has there been somebody who's reshaped their image in a more positive manner than it has been for John Tortorella in Philadelphia? And, you know, I kind of pushed back on it a little bit and said that I do think, yeah, maybe he's always had a rocky relationship with the media, but I do think for the most part, like 
people who really know Torts have only ever really said good things about him. There's always been players who didn't get along with him, but that's with every coach, right? But since he's been to Philadelphia, he's he's kind of become this like darling that people just love every move that he makes and everything that he does and he says, especially in this city, people just eat it alive. You worked with this guy for a while. I know you guys got close. I know you keep in touch. Um, I know you pushed him out of his comfort zone all the time. <laughs> so, you know, what do you what do you think about this whole transformation, if we'll call it, with the way people are are viewing him now? Yeah, it's interesting. Of course, back in 04 in Tampa, I was working. Obviously, that's the last year of ESPN's TV contract before we lost it for 17 years. And I was in that locker room as they win the Stanley Cup, me, the RDS French speaking broadcast and TSN, just us three and our camera guys on a, on a tripod, empty, empty locker room, just sitting there waiting to hear the noise outside. They'd won the cup. And then all of a sudden, here comes Dave Anderchuk with the cup, full uniform, puts it in the middle of the room and leaves. So there's a Stanley Cup in the middle of the room and us three reporters and our, and our camera guys and Andrew Chuck left. And then slowly people started coming in. It was kind of neat. And then eventually Torts comes in. The beard was dark. Then the hair was dark. Then he was really tightly wound then like way more than he is now. And then here fast forward, like I mentioned, 17 years later, I end up working with the guy in between, you know, he goes to Columbus, you know, kind of a fledgling franchise, but he brought them to great heights, went to Vancouver, an American in Canada will never be fully accepted. Right. And never really fit. So, and so this is really the first, and he was in New York for a little bit, obviously that's where he should have stayed and thrived. And they, but I mean, is there a better marriage than Philly and torts? I mean, it's perfect. I think that's so what's great. That's what, and the years of wisdom, the years, you know, he's wiser, he's grandkids now, obviously he's settled in. This is where he wants to live. He's, he's, he's big in the horse farm properties where everyone, he always had a horse farm, took care of horses and rescue dogs and rescue horses, wherever he went, Columbus, and then, uh, and then Connecticut and upstate New York and Florida. Well, he sold everything and, and all he has is Philly now. That's where he's living, South Jersey and Philly. He's got a kid in Carolina and this is going to be his life now for the next 10, 15 years. So I see him being in the Flyers organization for the next 15 years. His co- I don't know what his coaching you know, career will look like, maybe another three to five. Then I see him going to the front office and some sort of president, not president, but advisor, VP, something where he stays in the organization to have a little bit of a voice and a contribution training camp, whatever mentor. So not, not again, I think he could coach if he wants five to seven years, if he really wants to see this thing through, but if it reaches a point where it's just torts is torts and that we need to change then I, I think there could be something in Philly long-term because it just, it's a perfect relationship. And I think when he looks back on his life, he say, man, I've had a pretty amazing life in hockey and look yeah. how it's ending. Look how it's ending for me. Right. Most people can really fizzle and fade away. Any career can, um, you know, whether you're a broadcaster or whether you're a local politician or whether you're an NHL coach, but he seems to be ascending in how he his self-actualization is his, just his looking at life, how he's viewed by other people. It's pretty cool. He's, you know, we all we all don't get that. And he, and Torch is getting it right now. I would love to see this thing keep going up in Philly. And then if it, if it ever ascended to a cup, I mean, he's an all time Philly hero. If that happens. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's in the echelon with everybody, Chuck Bednarik, you know, all the uh, Jason, you know, Kelsey and, you know, Mike Schmidt and even, and then Chase, they love him. you know, it's they all right up there. Yeah, I mean, and, the fly, and the flyers need that yeah. new generation of guy. Right. Clark and Barber and all those guys in the seventies that won back-to-back cups. Lindros came close. He was their big superstar. You know, obviously Clark won MVP. He's an amazing player, Bobby Clark, you know, him and Gila Fleur, the robbery they had in the seventies. Clark doesn't get enough credit being a player because the personality and the broad street bullies overshadowed it. But yeah, that, that would be great for tours. So I keep in touch with, with um, two of Ed Snyder's kids, mo- mostly Craig Snyder. I mean, he's much older than me. Uh, him and my mom actually grew up together. My mom oh, cool. grew up, you know, with the Snyder boys, Craig and Jay, and gave me a lot of benefits as I was a young kid because I just had so much access to the Flyers, like um, getting to go on the ice in training camp. And, you know, one year um, they brought Eric Lindros to my birthday party when I was like <laughs> nine or ten years old, like, which Very is cool. insane, which is absolutely insane. But when I saw those guys this summer at a Phillies game, Craig and Jay, um, they couldn't have been more pleased with the Tortorella, Jones, Briere sort of three-headed oh, yeah. monster. They they really just and and the city. I mean, you know, I was with Danny Briere the other day at his son's birthday party, and, and 
he was telling me kind of about the dynamic of, of him and torts. And, and honestly, like he loves the competitive nature of torts and like the way they all go back and forth. Like they don't all, obviously all see eye to eye, but they all respect each other. And this just sort of dynamic of talking about players. And Danny was telling me stories about conversations they've had after games on their way to road trips where they didn't agree and torts would like go grab brad smith and bring him into the conversation and then brad smith would side with danny and torts would go all right well you are two smart hockey people so i, I must have to think about <laughs> he's like i must have to think about this a little bit differently and just sort of like the evolution of him yeah. um when he got hired i thought it was desperate but <clears throat> I've, I've done a complete 180 um, I love talking to his brother when we do Harvard games, Jim Tortorella. You can see a lot of similarities there. Um, his, his brother's an associate head coach at Harvard. He's, he's been a college hockey coach for a long time. And it, it's, been, it's been cool to see here. Um, it's been cool to see. But the one thing I'm curious about, the success that they've had this year, like I wonder how much it helps them or hurts them in the long run. Because I do yeah. think like – it was hard at the trade deadline this year because, you know, it's hard to trade Scott Lawton and some of these other guys when you're right there for the playoffs, but you really got to be thinking about three years and four years from now and not today. And it's, 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 it's hard for this team based on the success that they've had. It is, but I think they can do a lot at the draft. You know, the draft is good because there's real time selections. And if you really do your homework and do a lot of groundwork before, Hey, if it doesn't work out for you at 10, I got connect me or I got this or I got connect the and a lot and like, you know, put those guys together, which I kind of like those package trades we've seen the last couple of years uh, for that can really make a team plug a couple holes, like a team like Buffalo. Can imagine they add like a lot in a connect me. Yeah. Like, and, they, and, they, and they walk in the room again around those young elite guys we talked about, but who's, and who's going to pop next year. They got three or four guys behind Paterka and those guys still coming. They got to figure out who are the guys. And then Jack Quinn comes back. You know, so something like that, there could be something for Jonesy and Briere. And I agree, just when you have those kinds of people at the top of your organization, man, it's going to be hard to fail. But again, when there are so many teams and the draft is spread out so much, it's hard. You got to get lucky with second and third rounders. You got to find Braden Point, you know, after the first round. You got to find Brad Marchand in the third. You got to find Patrice Bergeron in the second. Like, yeah. got to get, got to get lucky in the second and third round because the, the first round, everyone is pretty smart now. There's no more dumb guys. For, GMs anymore who make these terrible picks. Everyone's pretty slotted. So by the time you get back to your second round pick, now you're getting the 50th best player in the league, you know, and not the 30th best player like you used to when there are 21 teams. So yeah, yeah. it's tough, but you're right. It, it, uh, I'm sure this year they would have loved to get a chance to get Celebrini or one of those top three, four elite guys because then it does fall off. Good players, like we talked about, you'll get good players, but you're not going to get a great one probably. Yeah. So that, that so therefore they're going to. They're going to have to get lucky through a trade or a free agent. And again, again, Philly is a destination. People will go there. People they will, will now. To go there. They will yeah. now. They lost yep. that for a little bit, but but I think that that buzz around them is is certainly uh, starting to come back. We've got a really good question in the chat, Butchie from from Thomas Schultz, um, and, and you know he asked Butchie, "How do you see the Hurricanes when talking about superstar status needed for success?" We've been throwing the elite word around. We've talked star yep. versus superstar, who you need. Um, what, I, I, that's, a, that's a good question because that's a it question is. we're constantly asking and talking about with the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, so, so where do you see that in, in Raleigh with, with Rod Brindamore's group? Yeah, before the deadline, I thought they were a Stanley Cup contender. And then they, add, uh, they take a flyer on Kuznetsov, and I called his first game on ABC and saw him in person and realized, oh, my God, he's the most skilled guy in the team right now like the most skilled guy on the team they added a guy who's the most skilled guy on the team that has to be good now will he be disciplined will he play really good hard playoff hockey as it gets harder um and then they add Gensel so again just an unbelievably good player so smart goes to the right place every single time and he can shoot the puck like that's what makes it you have to have a skill set something in this league um whether you're firm on the wall whether you're like a, a, a thoroughbred like Chris Kreider who can be a good playoff guy um, but Gensel is just so perfect. He's almost a perfect player. He's real. People say that he can't play without Crosby. Have no idea. He is going to shine. You'll notice him every shift. So 
put you put those two guys on that team, it's like, damn, they are really good. But that that I, I was really disappointed in them the other night against the Rangers. I thought they were bullied on the wall. Their wall play was soft. It was not now. Maybe when you get new guys, there's a little bit of and again, there's something you would know better than me. A little bit of hesitancy. Maybe sometimes it, they do just go and get entered. By the time it's like, well, where is he going to go? I'm not yeah. sure. So maybe maybe you get a half I step behind. I I think that's that's a part of it. It takes a minute. To Take just time. get acclimated. Yeah. yeah. And they got 15 games to do it. So they have 15, 16 games. They got a good month and a half to do that. And if they can get there, then because, you know, Martin Nook and those and Jarvis is a dog and, and Stahl still has enough game. And Nason is a dog. I like Nason's game, too. He's underrated in that regard. He's going to get a nice contract coming up here as a late stage of his career. And get another good Sabre guy if they could add someone like him, right? A dog around the net to go with that skill. So, uh, so yeah, I still – and I like Kochekov. I think he's a good goalie. I think he's a chance to be one of those guys who can get hot for a couple months. The defense is really good. Brady Shea's right. going to make a huge decor, amount of money this year. That decor so is stacked. It's, it's up there six. with Vegas. And, and Orloff's it's, coming. You're right. It's right up there with Vegas. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm bullish on them. It's, and Kuznetsov is the interesting factor um, to, to realize how skilled he is. And will Sveshnikov bring it as a horse? He hasn't quite done it yet. Uh, who's just a good player, not a great player. He just does everything good, yeah. you know? And so, uh, and that's the kind of, you win with guys like him. He really is a lot like Bergeron where he just really does everything. Well, well he's, he's, the, he's, he's the, he's the closest guy to Bergeron that there is. He, uh, the he, closest can be, call. he can be the best player in the neutral zone. He can be the best player in the defensive zone. He doesn't have to necessarily score to impact a game. Um, you know, right. he can just right. be so does. in right. other areas. And, and what I would say with Carolina is like, I still wouldn't put any of those players in the elite category or superstar, but okay. Jake Gensel is an elite scorer. Okay. He yeah. might, he's not an elite all around player. He's not a, a, a hundred point player. He's not, he's not any of those things, but he can score as well. He's, he's just a naturally gifted goal scorer. Like yeah. there's been guys like that through the history of the NHL that, you know, don't need to be elite skaters or or elite puck handlers or up and down the ice at a million miles an hour, but they get to the right. Like Jeff Carter was an elite goal scorer in his career, but he was never an elite hockey player. He was never a superstar. Mm -hmm. He was a high end, very good, maybe some all star, you know, type of player. But you yeah. know, I, I almost think of him like that with Gensel. He's going to score goals for you once he settles in, and he's that guy in the playoffs that. When nothing's going right, he'll score right. a goal. You know, he, he lives, will be right. that goal scoring game breaker for you. So, yeah, because um, he lives around the net. He can score playoff goals. He's actually, to me, a lot like Brad Marchand. They can yeah. shoot 30 foot wrist shots and score. And then he's different personality, obviously, but he, they can score from 25 feet wrist shots. And then they can score those goals around that, kick it off the defenseman. If I throw that in that area, something good might happen. That's how they think. And Gensel thinks that way around the net. He's a great neutral zone passer across the ice to people. And then the way he can find his way to the net, gets to the middle of the ice, you win with guys like him. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I thought that was a good and an interesting question just based it on is. some of the yeah. other things that we were that we were talking about. So uh, let's 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 go into last night a little bit. Um, and plus, just you know, one more thing on one more thing on Gensel, Colby. It sounds like to me that Minnesota Wild is where he wants to end up. Just put that, well, one, he, put that one away. That's, that's that makes sense. He played at the University yep. of Minnesota. We, we know how those guys uh operate billy garen will be the general manager of of the upcoming u.s teams you know yep. gensel will have a big role on those teams um sure. you know in the the world i know we're not calling it the world cup i forget four the name nations of the yeah. four, nations four nations tournament yep. I, I haven't played in one of those in, in about 20 years um <laughs> gold medal game on espn next year so look at oh really game. oh that'll yep. be cool all right yep. yeah that that'll be that'll be like a little appetizer for the olympics yep. it will. Um, yeah. it'll 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 be like a little appetizer for uh, for the Olympics. So let's look at last night a little bit, quickly go through a couple of the games last yeah. night. Look, I, I felt, you know, the Seattle, L, the, excuse me, the St. Louis LA game, disappointing effort by the LA Kings. They've got an opportunity to, to, you know, play consistent hockey, but they continue to just sort of be this up and down, this up and down team. Um, that, that just doesn't seem like a real threat to do anything in the playoffs. They didn't get Linus Olmark. We know they tried to get him. Um, but 
you know, it, it just seems like a team that's probably, probably a one, one round and out team in the playoffs this year. Now, four months ago, nobody could get through the neutral zone on the LA Kings. Nobody could get a puck by Cam Talbot. It just doesn't seem like um, the same team right now. They're going to probably finish in third in, in that division. Um, although, I mean, I know Nashville, they they play in the, in the central, you know, not the Pacific, but man, Nashville potentially could catch up. Do you think the blues have a chance to, to fight their way back here, Butchie, especially with the win over LA last night? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, you know, there's, they're sitting at what, 71 points and that's, that's a lot of ground to make up in, in a short amount of time. So yeah, I don't think uh, they have enough time to do that. Um, so yeah, I, I think that I think we're pretty much set in the West. And but look at man, you mentioned that central division, although the like you said, the Preds um, creeping up closer. But you know, Colorado, Dallas, Winnipeg could have three 110 point teams, and one's going home after a week and a half. <laughs> you know what I mean? After after that long year. And then you look at Nashville and Winnipeg last night. I, I'm I was actually surprised at this. I know the Preds have have been as hot as anyone lately, but. You know, I, I watched the, the the Winnipeg Jets, you know, shut out. Who did they play a couple nights ago? We we talked about this game. Maybe it was even it was yesterday. I'm 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 chugging back through my notes just to um look at, at who they beat the other night. It was a dominant effort by Winnipeg. And then they come out against the 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 Preds and and they kind of get stifled. The game was three nothing at one point. It ends up four to two. Um is Nashville a real threat in the playoffs? Because if you asked me two weeks ago, I would have said, yeah, they're hot, but they're not a real threat. But but now they're beating these good teams that are ahead of them that we're looking at as they are actual threats to win a Stanley Cup. What do you make of this Preds team? Yeah, just again, we, one of those teams that got hot at the right time. I mean, again, Roman Yossi, Hall of Fame player. Unbelievable. Um, He's yeah, elite. He's elite. Absolutely elite. <laughs> uh, another Franchise point the cornerstone. Another point per game year for him. Unbelievable. Um, so, yeah. And then Andrew Burnett is just, he just brings offense to a team. And there's, again, they're so young. They went so young, but they went in, interesting combination. Barry Trotz, how he went young. And people laughed at him when he signed O'Reilly and Shen and these guys. And yeah, these guys are winners in the locker room. And he, and he got rid of Duchesne and Johansson. I think the guy knows, I think he knows hockey players. He, it, it, Barry, no, Trotz, those moves... Barry Trotz is an elite people person, elite people person, <laughs> Hall of Fame coach. He'd be in the Hall of Fame as well. Yeah, so and, uh, I, yeah. I, it, it was actually Washington that Winnipeg bet. I, I our guy uh, Richard in the chat, um, who I know is is a Jets guy, helped me out with that. They they Winnipeg looked great against Washington, but then you see what Washington did last night against Edmonton. Um, and, and I mean they they didn't really even show up. I mean they take a couple of penalties right off the top of that game. That power play gets on the ice with a four minute power play to start. Drysital had about five one-timers on that first power play. I think he connected on the fifth one. You you can't just put Edmonton on the power play all night. I mean, that's just a, a total recipe for disaster with that team. So if you come in tired, a little undermanned, like Washington, a little older, they're not, 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 they're not a great skating team at all. Edmonton will make you look stupid. That's the level they're going at right now that they've been going at since they fired their coach and realized we better fix this. So this is going to be a disaster. They've just been humming. I just wonder if they're going to hit a wall in the postseason because they really have been sprinting now for four months. But I don't know. I think they're, you know, that's what they can do. They can make you look silly like they did Washington last night. And Stuart Skitter's got it going. You know, he was read the riot act early in the year with uh, Kenny Holland. He basically said, you got to start playing better. I got to go get a goalie. You know, he was like, you, you got to do it. I can't, we can't do this much longer. And uh, he had a conversation with him and, and uh, he turned it around. So good for Stuart Skinner. But yeah, back to Winnipeg too. Winnipeg, an elite goal uh, prevention team. Them and the Panthers are head and shoulders above everybody. The Panthers just score a little bit more than Winnipeg. That's why they have a few, you know, a little more points. But Winnipeg's going to be a hundred point team if they get hot offensively and Connor gets going and Toffoli gets going. They're going to be. They could win the Stanley Cup. Like that's how good that team is. They've only given up 157 goals this year. Like they're hard to play against. They have. They're big in the bottom six. 
and they're, they're, they can skate in the bottom six. They're, they're tough. Like, watch out for Winnipeg. They're kind of sneaky Vegasy like because their defensemen are also good. Like, they pay their defensemen. They, that group is paid. And right in that kind of like, like, they, like Vegas pays them and, you know, those five to $6 million area. So Winnipeg is really good. And, and, but, again, that first-round matchup for them is going to be tough. But once they get by that, um, watch out for Winnipeg. Yeah, Chef Richard in the chat said it's concerning as a Jets fan that in the last three months, out of 11 or 12 games against teams above the playoff line, the Jets have only won five games. So that's kind of surprising to yep. hear. They it add is. to Foley, they add Monaghan. Um, they're they're going to be a problem, though, because they've got the goaltending and, and they're deep. Um, yep, and so big. Y- 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 we had the Colorado-Vancouver game last night. You know, uh, I, I, I want to make one comment about that game before we get into our Tim Hortons tweet of the night, um, which was from the Edmonton game. But the one comment I want to make about the Colorado Vancouver game was, and I only saw about the first half of that game. I fell asleep and then I watched the, the condensed version this morning just to catch yep. up on it. But Mark Riker, their color guy, when they were down two, I think it was at two nothing, he said, I got to tell you something, being down to nothing to this team doesn't concern me. He said, or no, sorry, not to this team, for this team. So it wasn't a shot at Vancouver. It was, I'm just so confident being around this group that there's no lead they can't come back from. So if the color guy, who's a former (laughs) Avalanche player, feels that, then you truly have that belief in the locker room. And then they do. They come back from down three, nothing, you know, McKinnon, that, that, bomb of a one-timer on the five on three you've got Nashushkin who's back he's back playing on the power play he looks good he's probably feeling a heck of a lot better after dealing what he what he dealt with in the assistance program um, but I just thought it was funny that Mark Riker said that and, and was saying it not just blowing smoke up people's ass like he was being genuine with that comment um yep. and and then here come the abs man they like the west runs through Colorado right no doubt about it. Um, yeah, Mark's really plugged in, really good. Uh, McKinnon's got a multi-point, uh, got a point streak now, 14 games. Third time he's done that this year. Only Dion, Gretzky, and McDavid have ever done that. So I think he's your MVP leader right now by a little bit. Rantanen has a, an assist in 11 straight games. Again, that's the third longest in history to Makar and, and Sackick in, in Nordique history as an assist. Um, so, yeah, so they are cooking. They were my, they were my Circa Pool preseason wager to win the Stanley cup um, back in July. So now to, to realize, look at them now and to add Middlestead as a second line center, we'll see if it's good enough to reconfigure their roster in the bottom with big bodies. They have Wood, Duhame, Trennan now, so they can play a heavy game against Vegas if they have to, or even, like I said, even Winnipeg has some heavy forwards, not as heavy on the back end. So yeah, I think Colorado, again, I've said all year yeah. long, if I, if I had to bet, a, if I had to bet a paycheck, you're forced that you have to bet a paycheck on one NHL team to win the cup. You lose a paycheck. If it doesn't happen, you get a bonus one. If they win it, it would be Colorado just from that betting standpoint. All right. Well, I got to issue a quick correction on something that I said. I said that Jake Gensel played at Minnesota. Jake Gensel played Minnesota oh, high school, Omaha. played yes. at Nebraska, Omaha. I, I, right. I, I messed that up. I, I, I kind of, he's a Minnesota guy. The family's that. Minnesota he is a Minnesota guy. I always see in the summer he's hanging out with all my Minnesota buddies um, out on their lakes out in Minnesota, which, again, I go to the ocean. I don't go to the <laughs> lake. I don't get the whole lake thing. Um, I- I've been to I've been to Reamer's house on the lake, and they do the flat. They got their flat boats. I forget what those are called. The, um, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's I know just, what you mean. It's a, it's a whole diff- – it's different than going to the shore, all right? It's different. It's different. It's, it's, but, it's different. Yeah. It's different than going to the shore. And then Merle's in the chat said that Mark Rycroft the night before when the abs were down two to one said they'd win six to two and they did. So maybe we got to have Mark Rycroft to, to He's start dialed. guess yeah. picking for people. When um, ESPN comes into town to do our games, you know, that gives the TV people a night off. Now some of them also do radio. So they're always there or it's a road trip. So they'll travel with the team. They won't work that night, but yeah, I talked to Mark recently. We did a Colorado avalanche game and, He's really plugged in. Some of these, some of these analysts, they're, they're, they, they're friends with the coach, with the GM. They hang with the players. They have an interesting spot in space. And if they're smart and respectful and they can really get a lot of information, they see a lot. 
and it helps them formulate these opinions where they don't call people out or or anything like that but but it, it makes them very informed and it gives them a really good feel and, and yeah. mark's certainly at the top of that list well joe joe sackick has set a culture of of treating people sure the has. right way i mean i i like i still get sort of giddy around him and, <laughs> and, and, and he's only a text away but i still like Anytime I, anytime he acknowledges me, it's just like, today's a good day. Okay. Like, he has a royalty vibe about him. Similar to Eisenman, these guys and Mario, yeah. that, that generation had a royalty that we'll see how these new kids, if they can replicate that kind of feeling you have around them. They're so, you know, they're so transparent and omnipresent on social media and, and all the social channels now we kind of know who they are. There's no real mystery we're like Sackick and Eisenman, they're these quiet killers, you know, and, and everyone always, always underestimated Joe Sackick as a competitor, as a player, as a front office person. I bet there were people who laughed when he was GM of Colorado. Joe Sackick, he's just a talented goofball. He did, he's, not, he's not a serious guy. Put a, put a winner together, didn't he? The, oh, my gosh. Championship player, championship manager, and championship yep person so absolutely um, yep. there's there's no there's nobody better i i i you know it i could do a whole show talking about about joe sackick um let's let's go to our tim horton's tweet of the night and, and connor brown got his first goal of the season last night i know our <laughs> friends at oilers nation have been talking about it all year um but the roll up to win is back for tim's 60th anniversary celebrate a big year with some big prizes, an all-electric Volkswagen ID4, a sun-soaked Hilton getaway, and cash with a daily jackpot of $10,000. Play on the Tim's app. Um, and, and that takes us to our Tim Hortons tweet of the night. We went with a little bit of humor uh, in our <laughs> Tim Hortons tweet of the night. Um, and I'll read it to you. It says, Connor Brown right now, and it is a picture of the 40-year-old virgin uh, yep. laying next to his lady after, you know, what would appear to have been his first time. And yes. you can see the relief on his face. Steve Carell. Yeah. What, what, what a role. What a, what a picture. Yes. To finally get it done to finally score. So now we need to get on the horn for Thomas Nosek. Have you seen his stat line, Colby? Is it bad? He's played 21 games this year. He has had some injuries. No points yet. Ooh. Three goose egg. I mean, zero, zero, zero. You know, he had seven goals for the Bruins last year. He had eight, three years in a row, playing that nice bottom six role. Really good face-off guy. You know, he was close to 60 for the Bruins last year. Um, so, obviously, some injuries, but he's a big body. He's out there. But to get no 21, you're not get a puck off the shin, and it goes to someone's tape, and they tap it in. So, we, had, we saw Connor Brown finally do it last night. So, let's get on the horn for Thomas Nosek. Let's get him a point soon. Okay. All right. You heard it from All Butchie. Right. I feel like now he'll get a point soon. So before we do a quick preview of tonight's games, let me just, okay. let's get to the frozen four question from Merle. Yeah. All right. Putting you on the hot seat a little bit right now, based on what you've seen. Okay. Who do we think is going to be, you and I will be doing the whole tournament together on ESPN. We'll start in the Providence regional. Then we'll go to Minnesota this year. Uh, for yep. the Frozen Four, Taylor Tannenbaum will join us as our ringside reporter for that. Um, who do you think we're going to see in Minnesota at the Frozen Four before we preview tonight's games? Well, I think BC and BU are both going to get it done. I think they're both going to make the Frozen Four. I think they're coached well enough. They have some experience. Um, you know, obviously the BC kids, the freshmen that just come out gelled right from the get-go. You never know for sure. Wisconsin tried it a few years ago. Didn't quite work out with that amazing team that you see now. Like that team had Condre Miller and Cole Caulfield. And they had Turcotte and Holloway. And they had a lot of good stuff there. Just didn't work out. But it's working out for BC BU had some disappointment last year, so I think they have kind of a, a character about them to go with their new skill and some of their returning skill in Hudson. Um, I really like Michigan State. I just kind of like the, between the goalie and the, and the whole vibe there. I think it could be a tournament team that can win a couple of games and get to St. Paul as well. Then that fourth team is always a wild card. You know, Will Quinnipiac find the magic from last year? It seems like it's they're not quite there right now, up and down. You really can't bet on a team that they're going to find it all of a sudden. North Dakota, not a lot of high, high, high end skill, but it is something about them this year. They kind of get it done. So we'll see how the bracket I was surprised. Fall. I, I was surprised they just got swept that last weekend of the season. Like, obviously, yeah. they've had an unbelievable season, but kind of limping into the NCHC tournament with a sweep. Like, 
shocked. I figured, okay, you'll drop a game, but to drop two, like that was pretty surprising for me at the end of the year for North Dakota. I think once they wrapped up the title, right, the conference is like they had a little bit and they can't afford a letdown. They don't have those guys like we talk about, the elite guys who can carry you. I can take a night off because Poss is getting two and one tonight. So I can just kind of <laughs> not maybe take a night off, but I don't, I don't, they don't need this much. I can be a little bit of a passenger. So, but there's something there about, so yeah, but that fourth team really could come anywhere. Wisconsin, Denver, Denver is another Denver. team. Again, they can score, but can they prevent in a That's, tournament action? So, their goaltending so yeah, so. has been has been hit or miss this year. Most of their defensemen look at the Boyum brothers. Um, they're they're offensive guys, but they but they can race. And, and the one thing we know about David Carl is is he's going to have a plan. Okay, yep. like he has a plan, and generally his players respond to his plan. So, I think it's going to be just a, a, a lot of big name schools. Like I, I think I it's going to be you know, three or four really big college hockey name brand schools, Michigan State's back in the mix um, this year. They've got Trey Augustine. And in a one game format, that guy gets hot. You know, you might not get one by him. Exactly. So, yeah, I kind of I agree with you. So whether it's Denver, whether it's North Dakota, I just think we're going to see four blue bloods in there. And it's going to be a a star studded packed uh, frozen four in Minnesota. We, you know, obviously having a Minnesota school there last time it's been, you know, Minnesota Duluth is certainly like St. Paul and we'll see you know, the Gophers certainly have the skill. They yeah. can get hot. They're, they, they they're, can, they're, they're hanging out in the top 10 all season. Yep. They've just got to win two games. Guys. Just got to win two games in three days. Maine could do yep. that. You know, there's definitely a good number of teams like Western Michigan could suddenly pop in six goals yeah, on a weekend. They get in. And They're kind of on that bubble right now. They are. It, it's a tough. They could. It's a, yeah. It's a hockey East NCHC bubble. So it's yeah. pretty exciting. About 10 teams from those two conferences. Neil, I see your comment about Wisco. While I couldn't be happier for Mike Hastings, I I don't think it's their year, but I do think we're going to see them consistently involved now moving forward. So No doubt, no um, doubt. Let's just poke around a couple of games and 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 get your thoughts on a couple of games, Butchie. I know this is this has been a, a, a long show um, coming to us live from Naples. Uh, Uchi, where he will be doing the Panthers lightning game Saturday at six on ESPN plus um, make sure you, you do that. Who are you doing that game with Butchie? Is it Cali? It's Kevin weeks. So yeah, we, Kevin I do, weeks. Uh, yep. But, so then I'll do that game. I have a couple in studio next week. Then we'll be in Providence the last week of March. Then I go to Nashville in early April for a predator game. My first game in Nashville, which I'm excited. Which then could be, to, which could yeah. be, that could have implications. It's blues predators. So if the blues get on like a five, six game win streak here, they could be, they could be threatening. Then I go to Colorado for two games in three days. Kind of cool. Me and Ferraro have Dallas, Colorado on a Sunday. And then I got uh, Colorado again on a Tuesday. Then I fly to St. Paul the next day, so Wednesday. One. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be arriving to our meetings with teams. Probably I might miss the first team or get halfway in because I'm flying in that morning because I have a game the night before in the NHL. So that'll be a fun two weeks. First two weeks of April, I got three NHL games and three final four games, frozen four games. That's going to be like a fantasy camp for me. Yeah. The first two weeks of April. Can't wait. And, and Na- Nashville come playoff time is incredible. Yeah. And, and what you'll learn when you do a game there, there's no press box. It's, it's, oh. a, it's like a press row a couple of press rows so you don't have your own enclosed area. Like All Hal right. Gill, who's probably doing radio for Nashville that night, when he starts flailing his arms when he's talking, <laughs> you got to watch out for like a, a stray bow to I the side it. of the head. Um, so 12 games tonight. You know, a lot of the big boys are in action. New York, Tampa Bay. Um, that that That's going to be a, a vasilevsky Shesterkin showdown maybe to see who has the crown for – the best Russian goaltender, um, New York against Buffalo, Butchie. That that to yeah. me is 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 a is a heavy implicated game tonight. Yeah, those those seven o'clock games are fun. Uh, the Buffalo New York game is big. How will Detroit respond against Arizona? That should be a, a freebie two point thing at home. Um, you mentioned Tampa Bay. You know it's very nervous time for them. The Rangers are going a little bit. They had a good game in Carolina. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh's pretty much finished. I like that Carolina Panther game. Another good test. We mentioned Carolina to come with this new lineup and go Rangers Panthers back to back. Boy, that's going to get your attention quickly. And then the Flyers again, home against Toronto. That's an ESPN plus exclusive game there. Um, so that's going to be interesting. How are the Flyers going to handle the, the, the speed? Of, it's funny. Austin Matthews has slowed down a bit. Colby, yeah. hasn't he? We're not talking about 70, no, 70, 70 plus goals anymore. Yeah, we, we need to get to 60 first. We're still six away. So, so yeah, so it's going to be a great night, again, on ESPN Plus with all the games and, 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 uh, and 
e, switch switch it around, Washington. E, ESPN Plus has as kind of for the out of town fan. I mean, it's completely revolutionized the way you can you can watch out of town. Here's a question I have for you: Vegas against Calgary. Okay, in Calgary, Noah Hannafin comes back to Calgary. Do yeah. they boo him, or yeah. does he get a warm welcome? No, he'll get booed. Yeah, for okay. sure. He's once he's you know he didn't sign the extension, so that's always a little bit offensive. And he's American, so that 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 combination alone, he'll get he'll get booed. It won't be it won't be you know vociferous, but it'll be a, it'll be a it'll be a, it'll be a boo for sure. A, a little yeah. little 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 low murmuring of boos. <laughs> All right. Well, look. Um, you touched on Florida, Carolina, big boy hockey, you know, Carolina needs to score goals against Florida. They're, they're big and heavy. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in our resident betting expert and producer Vic, uh, for our Betway bet of the day. Um, and with Betway, you can get a free bet up to $200. If your first bet loses, create a new account, scan the QR code on the screen and redeem your bonus. If you place a bet and the bet loses, you will get a refund of up to $200. You can then use that money to continue to bet on your favorite sports. Now, different than normal, this offer is only available outside of Ontario. Um, so get on that. You have the QR code on the screen. Make sure you scan it. You've got free $200 to bet with. There's 12 games tonight. So get into the action and have some fun. If you want a good pick, we're going to get one from Vic right now. He's going to pop on the screen and give us his thoughts. Or maybe go to Merle's social media and get, <laughs> get some advice from Merle's because he seems to have the hot hand. Vic, what do you got for us tonight? Hello. Uh, we hit last night. Uh, we were cool a little bit, but uh, we hit the over of Colorado, Vancouver last night. Awesome stuff. All right, um, I'm going over to that Florida-Carolina game, and I do not think the Florida Panthers should be an underdog against anybody in the league right now. I think they're the best team in hockey, and we're getting them at plus money on the money line against the Carolina Hurricanes. I don't think there's any team, any situation where Florida should be an underdog. They're the best team in hockey, best defensive team in hockey, but you mentioned already. And Carolina has... For some reason, throughout, like, what, the last 10 years, Butchie, what, they've struggled to score for some reason? I don't know why. They have some talent there, but um, I'm taking Florida on the money line at plus money. That's the bet way better of the day. All right. I like that. I, I like that. I like that, especially seeing, like I mentioned, how poor I thought the Canes looked against the Rangers' hard wall gang. We know the Panthers are going to come hard. Now, maybe they'll get a couple goals, pot a couple goals. Um, yeah, they do have goal scoring issues come playoff time, but that's where they hope Gensel can help that regard and this and then can relieve the pressure off Aho and Svechnikov, and then they can become a team that gets three and a half goals a game in the playoffs because then they, they can win rounds. I just can't imagine you're gonna get many times from here on out where Florida's plus money. I mean, I'm I'm kind of surprised that you're getting that. Um Agreed. it's a good opportunity to make a couple of bucks because they're in the plus. So uh, like we said, if you're gonna bet um, make sure you do it with Betway and you've got that opportunity to get that free $200 bonus, which, which is awesome. So just create an account, get your bet. If you lose, you get your bet reimbursed and then you get a chance to go back and win it again. So um, anything else you got today, Butchie? I mean, let's, let's just talk real quick before we wrap the show. I am wearing my Barry Melrose assist Melrose t-shirt. Um, we also have the ball marker poker chips now available um yep. on butchiot.com so if you love hockey you love barry melrose you want to support uh parkinson's research go to butchiot.com or go to assistmelrose.com i do think you restock t-shirt sizes correct i think they did that yeah eventually i'm going to bring that stuff over to butchiot.com but i knew there'd be such an avalanche of uh of purchases, which there were well over a thousand. I could not have handled it in my house. So eventually I'm going to bring it over maybe get some white t-shirts for the summer and stuff like because that. it's a great, I love how the logo turned out. It looks great. And uh, we're just all pulling for Barry <laughs> in this, in this struggle and this fight. It really sucks. It really does. And yeah, uh, we it, miss, it does. I miss him already. As we, you know, he, he did basically about 20 consecutive frozen fours. Um, so this would be the first one he's missed. And we did his last one with him last year in Tampa uh, as Quinnipiac won an overtime. What a way for Barry to go out for an overtime winning national championship goal. 
He's he's definitely uh, he's a legend, and uh, we will miss him gratefully this year. Um, the last thing I will say, Matt Murley says in the chat, uh, no sick anytime point. You're probably getting good odds on a no sick anytime point. Now that Butchie said it, I think it's going to happen. Yeah, he's he's getting some elevated ice time. He's been moved up to the top six occasionally. Obviously, the power play guy, how he. He's been a power play guy for them around the net, a real dog. Now, maybe Gensel could affect his ice time and where he is on the ice, his position. Uh, but, again, I love his attitude. He's still playing for that one contract he really hasn't gotten yet. It's going to come. Someone's going to give him, like, a three-year, three million, you know, three and a half, four million. He, he, he's a 20-goal, hard-working guy around the yeah. net. I like him. So, I, I like that from Merles. And, and usually for Merles, if I, if I, I'll give Merles the over tips. When I, a couple, I've given guaranteed overs a couple of times for my ESPN Plus games, and they've always come through. So I've made Merles some money. All right. Well, there you have it. Me. We've got Butch, Butchie's kind of hanging in the weeds, giving out little tidbits of advice here and there. So, look, thanks for doing this again. I know it's it's probably 85 and sunny. The golf course is probably Perfect. screaming your name right now. You can catch Butchie on Saturday at 6 on ESPN Plus. The, the Panthers book. lightning, he's got, he's got his good, good book. book. He's going to probably get a nice lights. tan. I, really I'm going to have to get a tan before the frozen four. So there's not too much of a contrast on us um, on camera. Vic, good job today. As always, hopefully your pick hits. We miss our guy, Johnny Laz. Uh, I know everybody thinks that we hate each other, but I actually do miss him. Uh, picking on him. It would have been fun to have Butchie to hear. Then we could have ganged up on him, especially because Lafreniere has had one game with a point in his last seven or eight games. It would Oops. have been absolutely perfect timing for it. Sorry about the early, early show technical difficulties on YouTube. As always, thanks to everyone in the chat. We will talk to you all on Monday. Have a good day, everybody. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Zarevalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.